guys welcome back so you can see from the intro um, I went ahead and put on a good two milligrams per centimeter square of this mineral sunscreen that you all asked me to review it is the attitude um, non-nano zinc oxide sunscreen I mentioned this in my review of the Ordinary's Mineral Sunscreen um, as being a, a suggested potential alternative, and you guys asked for a review. So if you're not familiar, um, Attitude is, I, I believe, a Canadian brand, yes. Um, they are the makers of my personal favorite hand soap. They make a wonderful, fragrance-free, very gentle, eczema-friendly, everyday hand soap that I use in my bathroom. Um, great to wash your hands before you take your contact lenses out. But anyways, they've got a mineral exclusive sunscreen that is only zinc oxide, non-nano sized. And it, um, the formulation is not only cruelty free, but it is also vegan, all right? And what I like about the attitudes uh, mineral sunscreen in contrast to the ordinary's uh, mineral sunscreen is that it has far fewer ingredients in it that are going to be potentially problematic for people with eczema or sensitive skin. Namely, there is a paucity of exotic plant-derived essential oils and extracts. This contains colloidal oatmeal as its base, which has a long-standing history of, of being eczema-friendly and being very good for dry, sensitive skin. And so they formulated this in a very, very nice vehicle that um, is like, low likelihood to be irritating to people with sensitive skin, people with rosacea. And as I verbalized in my review of The Ordinary, you know, a real challenge of mineral sunscreens is that they, while they physically block ultraviolet light and provide really good protection against, against uh, UVB, the rays that... Um, that predispose to skin cancer and burn us, as well as UVA, the rays that penetrate deeply and age our skin. Uh, the, the problem with, with mineral sunscreens that most consumers run into and why they don't like them is that they leave a substantial white cast. Um, and I'm, I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with the attitude because one of the things that occurs uh, with, with, um, with the non-nano particles in particular is that the, the cast tends to become more prominent. And they have formulated this in a way where there's still a little bit of a cast, okay? As you can see, this probably is not going to go over universally well for all skin types. But in contrast to the Ordinary's Mineral Sunscreen, it is, it's quite a bit less. I believe you could easily uh, apply this, allow it to dry. It dries fairly sheer. And then you could apply your lightweight tinted uh, makeups on over it if that's if that's your makeup practice. And it, it probably may be okay for you. You may you may like that. Um, so I overall am a, a much <laughs> greater fan of of the Attitudes Mineral Sunscreen in comparison to the Ordinaries. The Ordinaries, as I mentioned for you guys, was is also SPF 30. Um, this doesn't have all of the jazzy plant oils that are touting antioxidants. Instead, it just has basic, minimal, uh, very safe ingredients. It has a variety of alkyl glucosides in it, which are moisturizing. They're frequently present in sunscreens. Alkyl glucosides rarely um, can become problematic for people with sensitive skin and eczema, so it's not, it's not completely free of potential problematic ingredients, but very, very, very low likelihood, um, particularly in comparison to the Ordinaries, which had an extraordinarily long ingredient list of inactives. Um, you'll notice with the, in contrast to the Ordinaries Mineral Sunscreen, the Attitudes Mineral Sunscreen only contains zinc, whereas the titanium dioxide was present in the Ordinaries. Um, the titanium dioxide doesn't really get you a whole lot extra as far as Coverage of UV, non-nano size, uh, non-nano zinc will get you a very good coverage of UVB and UVA, um, UVA1 and UVA2. So you're not really sacrificing much there. It just restricts the the formulator's ability to to kind of tinker around with the relative concentrations to achieve an SPF um, that they could put on the bottle. All right, but non-nano size zinc is a great physical blocker of both UVB and UVA. If anything, leaving the titanium dioxide out takes away some of that white cast. 
titanium dioxide as an addition to sunscreens can be particularly white and casty. And I suspect that may be what is going on with the ordinaries is that the titanium dioxide in there is giving quite a bit, quite a bit of flashback. Um, but you know, you, it's not perfect. The, the attitudes is not perfect. You still have, you still have a little bit of a cast, but it's far less um, than the other one. You know, it dries a little, you know, more transparent. You saw I put a substantial two milligram per centimeter squared uh, or half crown cap but bottle full to my entire face and anterior and posterior neck, entire neck, both sides as well. Um, that's how much you need to, to get to the SPF. And I was able to do that with this and have a much, 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 much more tolerable cast than the ordinary in my opinion. And I purposely wore this shirt for you all um, that's dark blue. I haven't worn this. This is my SPF shirt. <laughs> um, I haven't worn this for you all uh, with, some, with my other sunscreens. But you guys ask me a fair amount about getting sunscreen on clothing. Um, so I did get quite a bit on myself. Um, but that's happened with this sunscreen before. And I don't have, I mean, it comes out when I just put it even just on rinse. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem getting a mineral sunscreen like this out. Um, you can have some problem with staining of your clothing if you're using a chemical sunscreen that has avabenzone in it um, because avabenzone can chelate some of the minerals in the um, in the uh, in the water um, as it's as it's breaking up from the sunscreen and dissolving and that's what gives you that that white precipitate in um, fabrics and on plastics and things. But this zinc, um, I haven't had a problem with it staining my clothing permanently. <laughs> you may want to wear a bib when you're putting this on, because <laughs> uh, it does it does get on your clothes, and you know that's not so great to go go rocking out and about. All right, shortcomings of the attitude. Already kind of alluded to the fact that it's not ca completely cast free. Uh, this isn't going to go over universally well for all skin types. All right, but it doesn't claim that. The other major shortcoming of the Attitude sunscreen that I think won't go over well with, with many of you is that it does pill up quite a bit, all right? Um, I don't know if you can, you can tell that. It does pill up quite a bit um, and it is also not water resistant or sweat resistant. So I'm actually, it's actually the end of the day here. I'm about to go to the gym, that's why I put this on. It's about that time where I reapply my sunscreen. And I've worn this in the gym and it beads up quite a bit as you're working out. Um, it's not as, it's not as tenacious as the ordinary. The ordinary did not budge during a workout, but attitude will pill up on you and you'll kind of lose some of that, of that even monolayer. But it doesn't claim to be water resistant and so do, do be aware of the fact that with sweat, um, with heavy exercise, in humid climates, this is probably going to pill up even more. All right. How well this plays with makeup is hard for me to say as a non-makeup wearer, but um, it is it is less tacky and sticky than the than the ordinary one. But it does have it does have a slight bit of, of tack film to it, far less than the ordinaries though. Um, so I think it might actually be okay with some types of makeups, but you may run into that pilling problem and is not. 100% cast free, but is much more sheer than than, than other than other non nano sized zinc sunscreens. Um, you know, winning though in my mind as far as being cruelty free and vegan, one of the better one of the better cruelty free, definitely one of the the best vegan sunscreens out there that I found. Um, many of the vegan sunscreens uh, have problems with them, and that they have a long ingredient list. And this one's really short, very eczema friendly. Uh, and so it's got that going for it. In addition to pilling up though, one of the other things that I've noticed, I apply this, you know, obviously on my brow bones. And for those of you with a, you know, thick, coarse terminal hairs in your beard, like many of the, the men out there who watch my channel, this is not going to go in the beard area particularly well. Um, just judging by how it plays with my eyebrows, I've got pretty pretty uh, hairy eyebrows. Um, it, it beads up onto the, the hair shaft itself and it leaves kind of a visible, almost almost looks like you've got substantial dandruff or, um, or little knits, something that you don't, you don't want to rock. Um, so it does that as well. 
it kind of pills up on the hair shaft and isn't great in hair bearing areas. Very, very easy though to tolerate around the eyes, just like the ordinary was. Um, not a problem at all. You saw me put it around my eyes. Um, you know, this is one that uh, with the minimal ingredients, very, very easy to hack in sensitive areas. I think that for sensitive skin types, you will really, really appreciate how, how comfortable this, this wears, this applies. Uh, if you have rosacea prone skin, this is more likely to, to be friendly for you than some of the others. Although I can never predict with rosacea 100%, but this one is, is low risk for rosacea folks as well. It doesn't have fragrance. It doesn't have any alcohols in it that can, you know, sometimes irritate the skin and lead to a flush for people with rosacea. I think it's very rosacea friendly and you aren't, you know, thrilled with it, you don't like it on your face, it works really well on, on the body for everyday use, particularly on the backs of the hands to get you some good mineral SPF while also being very moisturizing uh, with the colloidal oatmeal in there. While this does pill up with sweating, it doesn't run into the eyes, which is nice. Um, so you don't have to worry about it dripping into your actual eyes when you're working out or, or you know, um, going, you know, out mowing the lawn or something like that and it's hot and sweaty. You don't have to worry about that. It is far less tacky and sticky than the ordinaries. So you could comfortably be outside you could probably have your hair down and not worry about, you know, your hair won't stick in it. It, it does start to dry on there and is loses that, that tackiness after some time. Whereas the Ordinaries remains tacky, this, this loses the tack, um, the, sticky, the stickiness. If it goes on feeling a little sticky, but with time it, it dries. And as it dries, it starts to become more transparent and more sheer. So, you know, if you're like me, you're an early riser, you could reasonably put this on and, you know, start, start breakfast, do your thing in the house. Um, and by the time you get ready to leave, or, you know, you could, by the time you get ready to leave, it, you know, it's going to be it's going to be significantly less less striking and a lot more sheer, a lot a lot less tacky, and you'd be good to go. I have to double check the price. I do know that this is not as affordable as the ordinary um, as the ordinary sunscreen. I get this on iHerb though. I mean, I, I shop a lot on iHerb, so I end up accruing you know points if you shop on iHerb. It's a really good deal. Uh, free shipping is easy to get on iHerb. So that's how I get it. And they deliver to, they deliver to many, many countries. Although I hear they're, they haven't been delivering in Germany. And I apologize for that. But, um, you know, you can get some of their other products on there as well. They don't sponsor me or know I exist, nor does the Ordinary. Uh, I just think they make very good eczema friendly products that are free of fragrance. Uh, this one in particular, and for, for many of you out there, you seek exclusively cruelty-free brands, you seek exclusively vegan brands, and I gotta tell you, in the, the cruelty-free vegan market, you can really go down a slippery slope of problematic ingredients. They tend to hype it up with a lot of plant essential oils and things like that, as many of you, as many of you are keenly aware, which can be problematic, and the attitude nicely leaves leaves out the attitude, you know? It leaves out the hippy-dippy stuff stuff uh, that can be problematic. They, they really do a good job. Colloidal oatmeal, very soothing for eczema prone skin. This is a good, good choice if you are somebody who is, you know, going through the irritation of a retinoid. You may not like it aesthetically, but if you're going through irritation peeling of a retinoid, this is a good choice. It's going to protect you from post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation due to the sun if applied, if applied correctly. And, it, you know, when, when you're going through tretinoin or if you're going through an oral retinoid like Accutane, your skin is, your skin is very susceptible to sun damage. This is a good choice. Uh, it's protective, it's soothing, and it's not likely to set you up for failure in, in the fragile state of your skin. But aesthetically, you, you may not like it, <laughs> to be blunt. Um, but in terms of the cruelty-free vegan sunscreens, to me, Cruelty free plus vegan, this one is winning. This one is winning the game. I know Badger, Badger makes a cruelty free 
mineral exclusive non nano sized zinc sunscreen that is water resistant it is not vegan however it's got beeswax in it i have it but i have not even opened it up or tried it so i know many of you love the badger sunscreens if that's one um, that you'd like for me to review let me know but this one is very affordable in my opinion easily accessible to many of you globally uh, via iHerb and I really you know I think it's a better choice than the ordinary one just as far as just as far as what you're gonna get with a cast so I hope this review was helpful to you guys in showing what you could expect with this applying you know it's not gonna go over universally well with all of you but it is a good sunscreen and I think it's a better choice than the ordinary that's just my my personal preference my personal opinion far fewer ingredients in this that are likely to cause problems and uh, I think they're just a couple, I think they're just several steps ahead of the ordinaries uh, with their formulation. The ordinary just needs to try again. I think they need to keep trying. They're not quite there yet. This is, this is closer to, to ideal, but not perfect, um, which hopefully you, you were able to appreciate in this video. I hope, you know, it's always my hope to give you kind of a non-biased review of the sunscreen so you can decide for yourself as a consumer. But. I will list this bad boy down below for you guys if you are interested, as well as their hand soap. That I strongly recommend. Hand soap is is a winner. Um, unscented, you know, fra completely fragrance free, very nice. Um, but yeah, love my attitude. <laughs> but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.